Hello, friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. I'm so excited about the things I get to share with you on the No More Curse broadcast. I want you to know that Deuteronomy 23.5 says that the Lord is going to change the curse and turn it into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loved you. Love being the royal law of everything that governs three worlds, heaven, earth, and under the earth. Love cannot fail. It's the kingly law. It is the most awesome force that every believer has, and it is the force that holds the whole world together. You know, this is an excerpt from the School of Him, and these daily broadcasts now are going to be from one night of several sessions on the royal law of love in the school of him. People are signing up from all over the world. We're very excited about that. And students and leaders alike said, you've got to share some of this on television. The people need to hear and see the anointing and the revelation that is exploding in this classroom. So today, join us in the classroom. Come right on in to begin to sit down and study in the word of God, the royal law of love. Did you know that faith works by love? You know, so many times people try to use their faith, but they don't realize that there's contaminants that keep us from being able to move mountains, cast out devils, and get our victory. And one of those is the love of God. Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, which means faith cannot work if love is not present. God is love. It's the only thing that fully describes Him. And as you watch these daily broadcasts, you're going to learn that love is the ignited flame of Jehovah Himself. It is the love of God. Not only did send Him to the cross, but it's the power of the love of God when we didn't deserve it that rose Him from the dead. Ultimately, the love of God is God using His power to deliver us and for our behalf to destroy the enemy's hold on our life even though we don't deserve it. Love and grace and righteousness and faith, they all work together. I want you to dive into this class. It'll change your life forever. Connect with us on nomorecurse.tv, experiencehim.org, and all the different ways we can be a blessing to you. Your life is about to change forever. Remember, love never fails. And if you'll use your faith that overcomes the world, work it by love. Your faith will never fail today. Ephesians 5.1, and the reason that this is such an important verse is because it tells you how to be like God. 5.1 and 2, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And verse 2, what's the first four words? And walk in love. And walk in love as Christ loves us. Can you see that? Yes. Well, the word followers is the Greek word for imitators. All right, so if we were to read it from the Amplified Classic, it would read this way. Therefore, be imitators of God. See that? Copy God. Just like a little child might see Dad do something and he, Im he imitates him. That's what he's saying to, for us to do with God. Be imitators of God. Copy him. Follow his example. As well-beloved children imitate their earthly father and walk in love. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So we can see it is impossible to fulfill the law of Christ and the ministry of Christ. Any ministry, gift, any function, any leadership function, any anointing, anything you're assigned to do in the kingdom, you can't do it without first. It's settling this issue. I am determined to walk by love because it's the only way God operates. Amen. Amen. So we've, we've seen this now in James 2. We'll look at it again in a moment. That's one of our three basic scriptures here to establish a point. We'll go back to James 2 in just a moment, but go back with me to Galatians 5 right now. I know I'm skipping around on you just a little bit, but stay with me. And we'll make a statement about James 2. James 2 says mercy triumphs over judgment. Yes. So you can see that God's nature then isn't to judge us but to put us in triumph and victory. Yes. The only, the, our judgment we bring upon ourselves. We're judged by idle words. We're judged by opinions. Basically, when we stand before the Father, the number one judgment of all judgments when we stand before Him is going to be this. What did you do with my love command? There'll be no need to draw out all the things and check off every box and take you and drag you through all the things you did wrong. It'll settle itself when he asks you one question. What did you do with my love command?
Because if you made it your quest in life to keep that command, all the other laws will judge themselves. You see that? So it's the king's command. It's the most excellent way of operation in three worlds. That's why he that's begotten of God keeps himself and the wicked one touches him not. You can get in a place where Satan can't touch you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was the thing that caused John to be dunked in oil, boiling pot of oil at 90, and they couldn't kill him and grabbed him with the flesh hook and pulled him out of there. He was still alive. Finally had to exile him. Couldn't kill the man. Because he was operating in a law far superior. By the authority of that name, the love of God. Now, let's look at this again. Galatians 5. Oh, my, my, my. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. For in Jesus Christ, now this is King James, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. Now, we're going to dissect that for a second. By faith, which worketh by love. The Amplified reads this way. We're in Christ Jesus, and neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith. Right? Only faith. Now, look at this phrase. Activated, energized, and expressed, and working through love. Now, we're going to look at one more translation, the New International Version. And here's where we get our word value. As we see that faith, the law of faith, eliminates all boasting. It establishes all spiritual laws, the catalyst of all spiritual law, right? But now look at this. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, look at this phrase, has any value. The only thing that counts glory be to God, is faith. Hallelujah. Faith. Yes. Say faith. Faith. Expressing itself. Say faith. Faith. Expressing itself. Expressing itself. Okay, let me ask you a question. How does faith express itself? I know. But think about what a faith expression would be. What's another synonym for that? Well, let's go back to the King James. I want you to get it. I want you to see it. That's why I'm going to keep reading it till you get it because you haven't ever heard it this way. See, this is spiritual information, and the Lord wants to grant you some insight, and I'm just not going to hurry and just feed, spoon feed it to you. For in Christ, Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh. Whoa, say that. Which faith. Which works. Which works. Faith. Faith. Which works. Which works. By love. By love. Faith which works. works. So how does faith express itself? Works. 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 Faith without works is? Yeah. Now here's the point that I want, to, I want you to get. Love is synonymous with corresponding action. Yes. Do you see it? You see it right there in your Bible? Now, we're going to layer it with these other scriptures so that your life is going to change forever right here. You're going to see how faith and love work together, all right? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. Notice what it says here. 1 Corinthians 13, 7, it says, well, the old English is charity, which is King James, but it says love bears all things, and all things, right? Or the word things, anyway, in the King James is in italics, right? That means it's not there in the Greek. So, love bears all. Love believes. believes. Love believes. Love believes. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. All right. Now, let's go to uh, the book of James. 
and let's look at the context. We, we highlighted only the phrase, the royal law of love. But now I want to look at the context of it for a moment in the book of James. James chapter 2. If ye fulfill, verse 8 now. If ye fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do. Oh, yeah, you got it. Do. You see that? Yes. Yes. Now you're seeing it. You're seeing the connection. You do well. Now, let's read on. Verse 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law. Well, yeah, that's, that's, doing, that's doing obedience, is it not? All right. Now, let's drop. Now, I could say, for he that said do not and do not. So you see, it. we're talking about works here, are we not? Yes. Look down at verse um, 12. So, speak ye and so do. Now, can you see, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Now it's making the law of liberty synonymous with the royal law of love. And it's making both of those laws synonymous with corresponding action. Because we're reading out of James 2. Does anybody who knows their Bible know what the entire chapter of chapter 1 is about? Faith without works is dead. The rest of James chapter 2, after he talks about the royal law of love, he uses Abraham. And he says, you show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Abraham's faith achieves supreme expression by his corresponding action. Amen. And he says almost identically what John says, James and John, right? Now let's go over to 1 John and I'll show you what I'm talking about. James 2 says almost identically what 1 John says in 1 John chapter 3. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Are you seeing something here? Yes, sir. All right, 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. But whoso has this world's good and sees his brother has need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed. Yes. Yes, sir. In deed and in truth. Can you see this? Yes. All right. If we were to look at it in the Amplified, it would literally say, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth, in practice. Now, why? Why is that important? Verse 19 is why. By this, let's go to the King James, verse 19. Hereby we know we are of the truth and shall do what? Do you see what he's saying here? He's saying faith without works can never come to become fully persuaded. <laughs> yes. So love is the motive or the main spring of action. In other words, Jesus was moved by compassion. Love motivated him to do, hear me now, faith works. Love for people is what motivated him to use his faith for those people, to get the power of God on the situation, to get the people fed, to get the people healed. Love is what drove the very faith of Jesus himself. Amen. Faith responds to love. Can you see that? Oh, glory be to God. So what we can see then is love is what causes faith to go into action. Amen. Love believes. Yes. Faith is like a seed on a shelf. And what's going to happen to a seed sitting on the shelf? Nothing. Nothing. Does it have potential? Yes. Yeah. Is there life in it? Yes. Could it become a plant? Could it reproduce itself? Could it bear fruit? 
Is it going to by itself on that shelf? No. But what's going to happen to it when it falls into the ground? The environment goes to work on it and makes it respond. Do you see that? Well, let's look at that. That's in Ephesians 3. That's what he's saying to us. In Ephesians chapter 3, you're going to see something now like you've never seen it before. Oh, glory be to God. Ephesians chapter 3, look at what it says here. Verse 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now, what is he describing is the condition of the man that is strengthened by his spirit. He's about to tell us what kind of man, what kind of fruit is exhibited when a man is strengthened by God's own spirit. When our spirit is strengthened by his spirit, this is going to be the effect. Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. Amen. And you will be rooted and grounded in love. Amen. Glory to God. Can you see that? Yes. So you can see clearly then that love does something about the soil of the human heart so that faith will grow in it. Glory be to God. Now we know then that must take us outside ourselves, not just faith for our stuff. We know that because what does the royal law of love say? What is the royal law? I mean, if we were just to define it scripturally, as according to the scripture, the royal law of love according to the scripture. That's what it says there in James 2. What is it? We found it. It's back in Leviticus 19. He's quoting Leviticus 19. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's a motivating factor to do something for somebody else. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. Can you see that? Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. Glory be to God. God so loved the world that he gave. You're going to see why seed time and harvest cannot come to full benefit without faith and love involved. Because you sow, you see, it, 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 it has, well, let me just, let me just do this. We've, we've got just about a minute 30 left in this session. Let me break open this subject right here. We have four Greek words translated love in the Greek language in the New Testament. Agape, phileo, eros, and storge. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time defining them. You can look that up on your own because I, I'm not so sure it, I mean, it's, it's information great to have, and you can break it down and do some teaching from it, but it doesn't necessarily help us totally in operating in the law of love. It just helps us identify different manifestations of it. Agape was a word hidden in the Greek language that they really didn't even use. In, in, it was there, but it was never used in, in conversation because it reflected a kind of love that was beyond human ability. And it was only began to be used and came into use with the writing of the New Testament because the only creature that ever showed up that would have defined a capacity that would require the word agape to describe them was Jesus. And Jesus began to use a word they never used. And he began to use it toward his disciples. And he began to talk about it's the kind, it's the way God operates. Agape. It's I love you because, not I love you if. I love you because you're beautiful. I love you. I just, I love you. There's no, nothing on the other end of it. Right. Yes. I love you whether I get a return or not. Which is why he died for Judas, even though he betrayed him. Agape. Then phileo is a, is a brotherly kind of love. Where we get our, our American city, Philadelphia. City of brotherly love, right? That's a Greek origin. All right, eros. You can, you can get that one. Where I get our word erotic. It's a physical, lust-filled kind of a, erotica kind of a love. And then storge. And storge is familial, like my family. Intrinsic affection for family members, a belonging, a, you know, that kind of thing. All right. But now, to deal with love the way James is talking about, 
the scripture of Leviticus. We're not talking about Greek. We're not talking about Grecian philosophy here. If we're going to talk about the royal law of love, as the scripture says, we're going to talk about God who is love, the creator of the universe, who created a whole universe and a family because he is love all the way back to Genesis. Yes. We're talking about the royal law that runs the universe. Well, now we're going to talk about the Hebrew word. And so, since we're talking about the Hebrew word for love, it's not the covenant word. There's a, there's, there's a covenant word, which is like a covenant commitment. That's chesed, but that's not the word I'm talking about. The word translated love out of the Hebrew is ahava. It, it's ahava, but it has a guttural to it, ahava. And it's A-H-A-V-A, -A -A, ahava. A, I'm talking about the English transliteration. Obviously, these aren't the Hebrew. It's, there's three Hebrew consonants, and we put it in the vowels. It's A-H-A-V-A, -A -A, Ahava. Now, right in the middle of it, and this is what I want to leave with you in this session, H-A-V, right in the middle of it, is the Hebrew word Chav. Anybody dare to venture a guess as to what that word means? It's the Hebrew word for give. Right at the heart, right in the middle of the Hebrew word love is the word give. Which means, in the Hebrew mind, the highest expression of love is giving. Which is why John wrote what he wrote. God so loved. That he gave. So once again, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. Which tells you God is love. So it settles the issue about his eternal nature. He's a giver. Oh, glory be to God. Amen? Wow, it settles the issue. So, uh, you know, we need to understand that love in the Hebrew mind is connected directly with action and obedience. Love is going to motivate me to do something. That's the idea. In God's mind, He loves so much He can't sit still and watch you go by. No, it's, it's causing Him to do something. Glory to God. He so loved, He left heaven and came to earth. He so loved, he went to the cross and went to hell. He so, can you see, love was the motive. Caused him to do every act of faith. Love drove it into action. Yeah. So love is equal to corresponding action. Faith acts because love believes. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. And until we get a revelation of love and are motivated by love, our faith's going to lie dormant, and we're just going to have a faith, but we're never going to come to the place where we're so fully persuaded we'll act on it. But when we get a revelation of how much God loves us, then it will not scare us. It'll cast, we're going to get into this next session. It will cast out the fear of acting on something you can't see. Amen. Come on. Because the one who loves you is right there. There's just no way. If he loves me as much in this world as he loves Jesus, then when I act by faith in obedience to what he said, no way am I going to sink. No way am I going to go down in defeat. No way am I going to be left without provision, protection, and help. The one who loved me, who is for me, who gave himself for me, will never leave me or forsake me. It motivated him to act in my behalf. And when something tries to stop me from doing what he said, he'll move it out of the way. He'll cast out the devil or move the mountain or suspend natural law, but he'll take care of his child because love for me motivates him to intervene in my behalf. So I can believe he will without seeing it. I don't have to see it. I know him. And my spirit man is strengthened because he loves me. 
Now you know why it's the royal law. It's the only revelation that can strengthen the human heart to get into being fully persuaded that it will come to pass no matter what it looks like. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Did you get anything? Yes. Woo, hallelujah. hallelujah. The royal the law of love. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, Father, we love you. Glory, glory, glory. Wow, what a wonderful message. Thank you for watching and tuning in. We here at Harvest International Ministries know that your time is valuable. So we want to make connecting with us as easy as it can get. For example, we know you caught this broadcast, but there might be a TV show you miss. So head over to TracyHarris.tv. You can watch this show again or any others we've produced 24-7 on demand to build your faith and change your world. Also, head over to experiencehim.org. We have blog posts. You can check out our monthly partner letter, our seasonal magazine, or you can even download free copies of any of Brother Tracy's books. But we don't want to be the only ones doing the talking. We want to hear your prayer requests. We want to hear your praise reports. So email us at the website or message us on Facebook and Instagram to let us know what's going on in your life. Finally, we know we have a worldwide footprint and we're so thankful Jesus gave it to us. But we know that means not everybody can worship with us physically. So make sure to join us Sunday mornings on Facebook Live, YouTube, Roku, and TracyHarris.tv. We are so glad you stayed. We pray you enjoyed the message. And we pray that Jesus brings His grace, His wonderful, wonderful peace in your life, and that He touches you with all He is into all you are. Give him your life today and let him do something with it. And go out and change your world. Have peace in Jesus' name. Are you ready to step into your destiny? Your life will be forever transformed as you grow in your relationship with God. Become established in strong faith grounded upon God's Word and become empowered to impact your world. If you're ready to answer the assignment of the Holy Spirit and become a world changer, come train with us. Often the first step on a new journey is the hardest, but we are here to help every step of the way. Apply today, either through the online application or by mail. Our core curriculum will begin with classes on righteousness, authority of the believer, and faith. Our instructors will impart biblical revelation knowledge and application, as well as practical ministry experience. Experience School of Him for yourself. You will never be the same.